Ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful duo coming up to the stage. I think they're an absolute hoot. They run a very successful show every Sunday called Entertaining Julia. You're going to love them. The Putterball Sisters, everybody. Yeah. Give it up, Drew Free! Woo! 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 Hi, guys, welcome to Craigslist. Glad you guys brought all your couches here. Also, you guys, I want you to know, I know there's two of us, I know we're both ladies. That's why we're putting on um, the hipster Titanic burlesque show right now. Uh, where it looks like you're in the Titanic, but it's really hip. And then, I'm gonna play the part of like a more hungover, less Kate Winslet, Kate, Kate Winslet. And you guys are gonna just draw me in whatever way you want. I like this bar. Let's give it up for Maddie for putting on the show. I like this. I like this bar because it looks like the kind of place you could really bring a hooker to. How did you get into hooking? You know, do you like being a hooker? Is it, did you major in hooking? No, it worked. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you went to Columbia. Then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to the front bar and I was like, look, hey, all you girls, let's get the same bangs and the same glasses just to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also went to the front bar and I met this girl. She was like, um, Look, let me explain something to you about my tattoos. So, these tattoos are like about my past. Like, everything on this arm is about like everything that I see happening for me in the future. <laughs> but then on my thigh, that's just a Zelda key. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I like when you go into really hip bars because you can see all the guys and you're like, oh, that's what it looked like if Greg Allman fucked a Revolutionary War soldier. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Logan Square is crazy. This is a, a hip spot. Um, it's gotten, I don't know, a little out of hand. I feel like I feel like if you want to leave your house to just go like see a cool band, and you're thinking about wearing one scarf, fuck you, put on 19. <laughs> if you want to go the double door and you want to put on one brooch, fuck that. You got to get a blazer of brooches. <laughs> I was thinking about just putting some iguanas on my shoulders and uh, calling them shoulder pads. You know? dressed up like Donna Summer shops at Forever 21. <laughs> I'm way too long over to be wearing a high-waisted skirt right now. Oh, I smoked 79,000 cigarettes and just ate a McChicken on the way here. So. I, 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 and it shows. Yeah. I drank last night um, like Judy Garland and not the Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, um, you. I'm glad that you decided to dress up like the business casual section of Party City. <laughs> you know, it's like if you guys want to party but you like want to do it in the office. Yeah. I'm a gal, you know. Yeah. I kind of think I look like a business orphan, but <laughs> I love faxing, but I also love soup. You guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of soup and business. How's your career going? Oh, it's going great. It's also your career. Mm. <laughs> so not that good. Uh, I mean, luckily I've been I've been trained for situations like this. Right. You know, I'm a, a theatrical professional. I went to theater school. I appreciate the movement class, but I really would have liked a class called "Here's How You Fill Out an Applebee's Resume." <laughs> I mean, I've thought about having dreams, but then I remembered I don't need them because I've already worked at Navy Pier. <laughs> they say, how do you get to Carnegie Hall practice? How do you get to Navy Pier? You take your theater degree in the 66 bus. <laughs> well, you know, when I was in my 20s, I believed in dreams too. Mm. And I was like, I'm gonna move to LA to do some acting. And then I just did a lot of coke on torture. <laughs> is, is that not acting? <laughs> the monologues were fast. <laughs> it was spooky. The CD 
days were changed a lot. The monologue's fast. <laughs> well, see, I feel like Coke, I just feel like Coke doesn't get enough marketing nowadays. Oh, you know? It's like, who's behind the marketing, boys? You know? Get a campaign manager already! Yeah. Um, so we made some slogans up for Coke. Um, they go like this. Coke, cause hey, don't we all want to cry about our dads? <laughs> or... The first three chords of Rocky Raccoon till 6 a.m. <laughs> because hey, these napkins aren't gonna organize themselves. <laughs> or Coke, because hey, your comforter can also be a curtain. <laughs> <laughs> I see you guys are bed bath and beyond fans. <laughs> I feel like they're Bed Bath and Beyonce fans. Right, probably. I I feel like like religion says to treat your body like a temple, but I've just been trying recently to do better than a garage sale. <laughs> Ooh, fuck, I've been you know. Treating my body like a free Craigslist post recently. <laughs> so I put a, a a dating post on Craigslist um, just under the free section. Mm. It just said. My vagina, couple holes, some wear and tear, pick it up by six or it'll be out in the alley. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys drink the way that these two uh, Judy Garland's drink, but if you do, um, what happens is you're like, we deserve it. It's been a long week at Groupon. Come on, let's just get a couple blue moons. Let's get a white zen. Just one Gotta white like zen. One blush. One blush and I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm a two blush minimum guy. Um, but then you end up getting as drunk as someone in the Civil War that's about to get their leg cut off and having too much damn rain. Oh, and I like keep trying to stop drinking, but then I keep going to bars and then bartenders are like, what will you be having? And I'm like, will you talk me into it? I find that whenever you're unemployed, the best way to get a job is you just go to bars, you wait till your face is falling all the way off, and then you go up to the bartender and you're just like, you, is your, uh, is your manager here? <laughs> because like, I, I bartend, I love a few drinks, and I was just thinking like, those are the kind of clothes I could get a lot of work done. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is, it is. It is. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have these nights, I have them a little too often, where uh, you call your, your gal pals and you're like, man, everybody was so fucked up last night, and they say, uh, no, that was just you. And uh, you're at Arby's and it's four in the afternoon. Or uh, if you are like, these, these two small meatballs, uh, you, there's just- These two chef boyardies. <laughs> Hi, uh, you guys, I'm so Italian, my bush grows master trolley. Uh, we get, like, there's a point of our blackout where mm -hmm. we go, both just get super Italian, and the only thing that matters is that one of us is not disrespected the other one. <laughs> and you're just like, I didn't, I did not call you a bitch. I didn't say you were being, I, I said, said you were acting, acting bitchy. bitchy. I didn't say you were a bitch. I said you were acting kind of like a similar to a bitch. No, I didn't say you were a cunt. I said things that you have as qualities that might yourself, be around the realm of a cunt. Like a cunt. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then we start crying, we're like, oh my god, I'm like, you're my only family, what would they do? Oh my god, oh my god. We're looking at the act. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have realized, though, um, I realized the best place to look for soulmates is at 4 a.m. bars. <laughs> yeah. It's the kind Lady. of place you can be like, you're 35, but you still know how to puke in your hand. <laughs> It's the kind of place that you can talk to like a Brad or a Chad or a Tad and, and you can talk to him like 20... It might be called O-shenanigans or o, 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 o Canadigans. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Patty Long Shenanigans. O Patty LaBelligans. Um, <laughs> you can talk to Brad for 27 minutes and you're like, are you talking to me still about how you were a marketing major and now you're thinking I'm taking one I.O. class? Is this going to end in a blast or not? I'm gonna wrap this up, okay? Are we Damn. blasting here or are we blasting in the cab? Yeah. And chances are. Are you talking or am I holding just a piece of plastic?
plywood. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, are, like, if this is as exciting, like, you, whatever you're trying to accomplish, it feels, are you trying to do your taxes? Or, like, am I at TurboTax now? This feels as exciting as if I'm shopping at the container store. <laughs> Honestly, you making out with me, I would rather go into a fresh creek and pick up a bluegill and just hold it right over my puss. <laughs> and it would feel better than the work you're doing right now. If I, could be, if I could be honest with you, Brad, if I could be honest with you, Brad, it feels like if you're just like taking Amy Grant Christmas CDs and rubbing them on my boobs. <laughs> you know? uh, before we get out of here, and by get out of here, I mean walk right over, right there. Uh, a couple plugs, I think, a is couple? necessary. Yeah, just a couple plugs. Um, Where to catch us, you know, all the important stuff. <laughs> uh, so, you guys, we wrote a screenplay. Mm. It's how to lose a how to lose Matthew McConaughey in ten days. <laughs> uh, and then we wrote another screenplay. You wrote another that. one. And it's called uh, If You've Seen Eat, Pray, Love. This is a spin-off show of that. It's called Eat, Pray, Blast. <laughs> It's where Julia Roberts goes to Rome and she gets fingered. And then Julia Roberts goes to India and she gets fingered. And then Julia Roberts learns to meditate and that is when she begins to blast herself. <laughs> if you guys want to follow us, we're going to be taking the Chicago bus all the way home.